It was, it was like a three nine-year-olds, so not even that. It was like a fucking half the group wasn't even allowed to work apparently <laughs> in them days. You're too young. At the time, we didn't even know how young they were because he would add years to the ages of the group because, you know, they couldn't play in the pub they were playing in or whatever, you know, because they were so young. I like to get them and, and tutor them. Is the word, I suppose. You understand? It's amazing what you can get out on them. It is incredible. It wasn't for it to be absolutely honest, it wasn't until about you know the second or third record or, or, or perhaps even the second or third session that I started to think actually this is really something fairly astonishing. fitted into the John Peel show because it was in a way made out of the John Peel show. It was, you know, it was a soundtrack that was based on listening to the John Peel show, the, the strange sense in the early 70s of listening to this show late at night that was bringing things from around the world that were just so exotic and so strange. I first heard The Fall in about 1981 on John Peel. The mad kid ran left side, south side towards me. He was about seven. You know, you kind of used to listen to it under the bedclothes, that sort of thing, in the middle of the night. And I remember not really liking it. And the mad kid said, give me the lead, give me the lead, give me the lead! And I just thought it was annoying and incomprehensible. But then that in itself became fascinating, and the good thing was you get kind of exposed to it. There was a feminist Austin Maxi packed outside, with anti-nuclear, anti-nicotine signs on the side. Anyway, two weeks before... It's that, that fascinating thing of this superficially ugly music, and these really fascinating, incredibly well thought out words. The Observer magazine just about sums him up. E.G. self-satisfied, smug. Mark does use language extraordinarily well and, and, and in such a way that uh, you're perhaps made to think more deeply about something which you've may have taken for granted, you know, so in, in the way that uh, a poet or a, a, a painter would, where you just may think, actually, I never thought of it like that. So I resign to bed. I keep bottles and comics stuck by its head. Pocket, let there be a drone. He has an amazing eye for the mundane and at the same time for the complete strangeness and otherworldliness of things. And they will ask me how I wrote Plastic Man, how I wrote Plastic Man. They're all cut up together. They seem to come from some other place. Politically, he's neither left nor right. He sometimes espouses views that you might think were right wing, but then he'll come out with something that's extremely radical. He's neither one or another. He's critical, essentially, of everything. And perhaps suspicious of everything as well. I don't, I don't understand that. No. Which I think is the best way to write. No. I'm still like that. I don't know what I'm writing about. Half the time. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to give me secrets away to these fucking idiots on the BBC. Do you, you understand that? We are all living legions so close. My brain is imploding, but everything is all right. I am a rabbit from Germany. I was very happy. I could frolic around all night. About the Leipzig station. Uh, but tonight, of course, is a night for the fall, and this is What About Us? Ah, what about us, Shepherdman? What about us, Shepherdman? What about us? Well, I am tempted to say that this is possibly the best fall session that we've ever had, but I probably say that about all of them. Uh, that was called What About Us. 
Uh, well, this is the lecturing part of the uh, concerts.